Welcome to February, and happy Friday Eve, everyone. It's uh, 21 News Chief Meteorologist Eric Wilhelm here. It's the video we call Weather for Weather Geeks. Did you see it today? The sun. It came out today. You know, I became a little more convinced last evening after I recorded Weather Geeks. Uh, I, I became a little more convinced that uh, we were going to see an appreciable amount of sun today. And that did indeed come to fruition this afternoon. The sun, yeah, nothing to be scared of, nothing to be alarmed about. Sometimes we do see it around here. All evidence to the contrary, though, of course, over the last few weeks, it's been a pretty uh, cloudy stretch in our part of the country since the first of the year. The uh, sun is the star at the center of our solar system. It's the reason for life on Earth, or it's one of the reasons for life on Earth. Uh, it's essential for life, that is for sure. The sun is 109 times larger than the Earth. And the size of the sun is actually one of the important reasons why we are able to observe eclipses on Earth, and that'll become a big story, of course, in a little over two months. We're going to be talking a lot about the upcoming total solar eclipse scheduled for April the 8th and the path of totality right across northern Ohio, northwest PA. We're going to be talking all about it often over the next couple of months. In the meantime, here's a time lapse from our Boardman camera today. Cloudy to start. Once the sun broke out, as we got into the midday and afternoon, it turned out to be a delightful day. Temperatures in the upper 40s to around 50, a good 15 degrees warmer than the average. All right, our sunny weekend forecast kind of coincides with the beginning of what we call solar spring. That is the three-month period in which we gain daylight at the fastest rate. It peaks, of course, right around the equinox in uh, mid-March when we gain almost two minutes and 50 seconds per day of daylight. I think it's two minutes and 46 seconds is our, our true peak. We're uh, at around two minutes right now. And so the next three months, the, the period of the year in which we gain daylight at the fastest rate, of course, the longest days of the year, that would be solar summer. And even though after June 21st, we start losing daylight, still, of course, from about May the 4th through about August the 4th, a lot of daylight during those three months. And that's when things kind of peak. And then we lose daylight rapidly from early August through early November before it kind of, of course, kind of levels out near the uh, solstice in December. All right, another way to think about the seasons, of course, meteorological or climatological seasons. And now that uh, we're into February, we're into the last month of meteorological or climatological winter. Our averages start rising certainly more rapidly as we go through the next couple of months. Uh, our average high on today's date is about 35, 36. Uh, by the end of the month, uh, we're up around 41 for an average high. Uh, this is a leap year, so we have an extra day this month. Uh, we have February 29th this year, in which our average high will be in the lower 40s. All right, in the meantime, we have a cold front sinking in from the north. The clouds thicken back up towards sunset this evening, but this front has very little moisture to squeeze out. So a sprinkle, a shower, that should about do it for this evening, and maybe there's another renegade shower later on tonight. Big national weather story is the rain in California especially, and this is going to be more and more of a story in the next several days. Already we had a few inches of rain in some parts of, of Southern California uh, today, and this is just a, an appetizer of you know what's to come. The rainfall totals over the next week, you know, there's going to be places that you know just aren't used to this much rain, of course, Los Angeles and surrounding areas. There's going to be places that get three, four inches plus worth of rain. That's too much rain for a lot of places, let alone in Southern California. And of course, in the mountainous areas, around Los Angeles. Uh, there's very hilly terrain, of course, just outside of LA. Mudslides are going to be a problem. All sorts of issues with too much rain with an atmospheric river aimed at California. Back here at home, our weather will be much less eventful. Usually if the weather's really busy along the West Coast, it's not so busy in our part of the country. And Friday and the weekend will be no exception. Now, pretty cloudy ho-hum day on Friday. Groundhog Day, but maybe towards the end of the afternoon the sky tries to clear. I think more pronounced clearing will occur Friday evening, and then all systems go for a great weekend. Now, Saturday morning, especially out here in north central and northern Ohio, there might be some freezing fog. I'm not real concerned about it in our television viewing area, but we might have fog with temperatures in the 20s in Toledo, Lima, Mansfield, maybe up to Cleveland. That could be an issue for a little while Saturday morning, but otherwise, yeah, wall-to-wall -wall sunshine Saturday. Hardly a cloud in the sky Sunday as well. And if you like this weekend forecast, and yeah, most of us do, uh, you're going to like the forecast for next week because it's pretty much rinse and repeat right into the first half of next week. Let's talk a little bit more about the longer range. Last evening I showed you the overall February forecast. Let's kind of break it down week by week here. Uh, the next 14 days, almost 14 days anyway, uh, should be a pretty warm period, <clears throat> not only locally but east of the Rockies. Now, I am expecting a pattern change around Valentine's Day, give or take a couple of days. 
and I think the second half of the month will be distinctly or notably colder with more chances for snow. You see that reflected in today's week three and four outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. All the reds and oranges disappear. They actually retreat out west, and you know what that means. If the west warms up, the east usually cools down. And so pretty high confidence that we're going to see a pretty large-scale pattern change as we go uh, into the second half of February. So let's look at some model data here. Here's a look at the Climate Forecast System, CFS. Temperature anomalies, about 5,000 feet above our heads, but usually it's a pretty good reflection of what's going on down here at the surface of the Earth as well. All the anomalies flip towards the end of the month. So this is uh, the seven-day period from the 13th through the 20th, again, right around and just after Valentine's Day. You see more orange out here, more blue over here. There's our pattern changing. And as we go through time, now this is just one set of modeling. Um, but it, you know, it drops the hammer pretty significantly at the end of February and into the first part of March with plenty of cold weather across the eastern U.S. Now, this is just one model, but there's pretty decent model agreement on this idea that we'll see a pattern change during the second half of February. Will the cold rival what we had in mid-January? The jury's out on that. Now, one thing we'll also be watching is what's going on in the stratosphere. You know, we've been flirting with some sudden stratospheric warming events this winter where uh, the atmosphere, the very tenuous thin atmosphere at the very top of our atmosphere um, starts to warm and that tries to dislodge the polar vortex. When the polar vortex gets dislodged and starts meandering around, yet cold can be dislodged down to the uh, mid-latitudes where we are. Now, we flirted with this on a few occasions this winter, but we haven't had a bona fide gangbusters SSW, Sudden Stratospheric Warming. Um, the modeling is attempting to show that, again, in the longer range. Another attempt at this. So this is uh, looking just past Valentine's Day, 16th, 17th. See this kind of ridge? Now, again, this is way up there in the atmosphere, almost to the edge of outer space. Um, but if you, if you disturb the vortex like this, where you get warmth uh, high in the atmosphere coming in and disturbing the vortex... It could split and do one of these things where parts of it go to Asia, parts of it come down into Canada. It might just get dislodged over into Asia. And if that's the case, you know, it won't have much of an impact on us. But it's possible that if this stratospheric warming does come to fruition, that the, the vortex will get forced down into our hemisphere, into the mid-latitudes. And if that's the case, yeah, cold, cold times would be ahead at the end of February and especially into the first half of March. But all well, that's kind of speculative at this point. Anytime we talk about sudden stratospheric warming events or potential events in the longer range, you got to take it with a grain of salt because the models typically, you know, have a hard time sussing this stuff out. Um, but it is interesting to show what some of the models are trying to advertise. Doesn't mean it's going to happen, but again, if it does, you know, the end of meteorological winter could be quite cold. But in the meantime, confidence is high that at least we'll have notably colder air, sudden stratospheric warming or not. We'll have notably colder air in the pattern during the second half of February. We're going to take Friday off from Weather for Weather Geeks, so I'll see you back here on Monday. Thanks for watching this week and tonight. Have a great Friday, a great weekend, and I'll see you back here same time, same place on Monday.